Welcome to another episode of Manos at the Movies. This is where I shed some light on some films that I think you really should watch. This time around, I'm going to uh, bring you a film from 1964. Now let me paint a picture for you. Uh, imagine you're sitting down and uh, TV comes on and it's an old episode of the old 60s Adams Family. And you think, oh, hey, I used to watch this. It's cute. Huh? And um, it's a typical episode where maybe a couple of neighbors come over uh, to visit. Uh, but imagine you're watching this episode and halfway through, Wednesday stabs to death a, the husband and Fester rapes the wife. Uh, and it's still supposed to be funny. That's what I'm talking about. As far as this film is concerned, I'm talking about Spider Baby. Now, Spider Baby is made in 1964, uh, direct, written and directed by Jack Hill. Uh, if you saw my last Manos uh, episode, uh, you realize that uh, Jack Hill also wrote and directed Coffee in um, Foxy Brown uh, from the 70s. Uh, and uh, he's a great, 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 great uh, B-movie, small-budget uh, filmmaker from the 60s and 70s. And uh, this film stars Lon Chaney Jr. and Sid Haig. This is Sid Haig's first film, actually. And, and Sid, I think, is in all of Jack Hill's films. Uh, Sid Haig, of course, uh, went on to uh, be known for uh, like Coffee, Foxy Brown, and more recently, of course, uh, playing uh, Captain Spaulding in the, the Rob Zombie films House of a Thousand Corpses and uh, Devil's Rejects. And this is his first film, actually. And I believe, if I'd have to check IMDb, this might be Lon Chaney Jr.'s last film. And Lon Chaney Jr., of course, is well known as the original Wolfman, and he did a whole bunch of other horror films. And I think he's the only actor in the Universal stable that played almost all of the, uh, the major characters. He played Frankenstein's monster, he played Dracula, I think he even played the mummy, as well as the Wolfman, which is the character he created. Uh, this film also stars uh, Carol Omart, uh, Quinn Redecker, Mary Mitchell, Jill Banner, Beverly Washburn, uh, Carl Stratzenig, uh, Strans Transiger, I'm doing this, just go with that, and uh, Mantan Moreland. Now, uh, what this film is about is the Mary family, and they seem to be suffering from the world's most unique disease. As a matter of fact, they're the only ones who seem to be suffering from it, and uh, therefore the disease is named after them, the Mary Syndrome, which causes its victims to start regressing mentally uh, by the time they reach the age of 10. And it just gets worse and worse uh, where they become more childlike, they become more insane, and then they just become savage. Uh, now, uh, the father of the family had passed on and made the chauffeur, Bruno, played by Lon Chaney Jr., he asked him if he could just keep them out of trouble and take care of them. Uh, and this is just a task way beyond Bruno's capabilities. Um, because the uh, the three children are the oldest, uh, Ralph, played by Sid Haig, uh, and then the two daughters, uh, Elizabeth and Virginia, uh, played by uh, Beverly uh, Washburn and uh, Jill Banner. And the uh, trouble starts uh, when uh, distant cousins... Uh, Emily and Peter, played by uh, Carol O. Martin, Quinn Verdecker, uh, come to uh, see about taking custody of the children. Uh, they uh, decide to come see what exactly is going on, and uh, they unfortunately decide to spend the night, which is not a good idea. Um, let me just go with um, first a couple things. The the tone in this film is really interesting. It's smart. It's it's got a very dark sense of humor, um, because not only do these three children are killers, but there's also uh, the older relatives who are being kept downstairs uh, in the basement, locked up because they're savages at this point. Uh, the uh, the two daughters uh played by uh, jill and beverly are fantastic um elizabeth is this kind of bitchy girl <laughs> who will turn on you in a second and uh, virginia is this girl who likes to play this little game she calls spider where she wraps you in a net 
and then stabs you to death. She also eats spiders, too. She th considers herself a spider. She's very fascinated with spiders. And uh, the two actresses who play these roles are just awesome. They uh, play off each other very differently. And the thing is, uh, Beverly was a uh, child actor, uh, had, had 20 years of experience, and this was Jill Banner's first film. Uh, and they have different methods, like uh, Beverly is very big in her performance, and Jill is very subtle and very naturalistic, and God, they work together just brilliantly. Sid Haig is, has a silent performance, because he has just gone mentally so bad, he just can't even talk anymore. And he's almost like an animal, the way he like crawls around. And what's funny is he's so childlike. He, there's actually moments in this film where he's actually adorable. It's it's quite, it's quite funny. Uh, now, go to let's go to uh, the uh, performances of the uh, the possible victims here. The lawyer, uh, Mr. Slocker, comes with uh, Emily and Peter at his assistant Anne. Um, they just do not know what they're getting involved in. And they just, they, um, the performances here, first off, uh, Carol Armard, who, uh, who plays, uh, Emily, who's really irritated the whole time. And she has this kind of quirky quality that, uh, you see later in the film. Um, let's see, Mr. Slocker has, he, 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 he isn't dumb, he, but he just, he's almost naive in a way that he just does not realize that these people are insane. Uh, he even, like, comes uh, across uh, two of them uh, with knives, and he's just saying, No, this isn't done! This isn't done! Uh, also, I uh, need to say that uh, the performances uh, by uh, Quinn Redecker and Mary Mitchell, who play sort of the... Uh, the traditional uh, normal characters uh, who are sort of the heroes by default, they're actually very well done. Their characters are well written. They're, they're pretty likable. And the performances uh, by both those actors uh, are quite good uh, to the point where it's like, hey, you kind of don't want them to be hurt. Uh, and it's just got a terrific tone all the way around. Uh, it does have that kind of Adam's Family Munsters quality, but they actually have lethal consequences to the scenes. And there's even moments that are truly touching because Bruno really does love these kids and he just wants them to be good and not hurt themselves or hurt other people. And he just, he just doesn't know what to do. And there's this wonderful scene where he is just at his rope's end. And Lon Chaney is very good uh, at portraying this sadness and uh, this moment where he kind of gets kind of an idea of what to do and he it's just so sad and he and uh, the three young actors are, are just really good together and I, I do recommend this film a lot if you uh, can find it either on Netflix or a video store please go see it it's an excellent movie uh, I highly uh, recommend it. Uh, that's it for now. And uh, I'm the real Manos. And don't forget what uh, Bruno says. It's not nice to hate. <laughs>